All right. Greetings and welcome to the Zero Hour Squared Classics. My name is Mike Trujillo and joining us today on the Zero Hour Squared Classics, Classics is a Bay Area band. They've been around for quite some time, but they're getting ready to put out their second album, which is entitled Between the Light and Air. Currently, their label is Silent Pendulum Records. And I'm joined by vocalist Ian Forsyth from the band Cyborg Octopus. Hey, Mike. How you doing, Ian? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Good, good. Yeah, great to have you on. And uh, how's everything going with the uh, Cyborg Octopus right now? Uh, good. It's been it, it's been real busy. Um, also real emotional. Uh, we just did uh, a three day run um, with some friends in Flub um, this past weekend, and it was the last couple shows we had with our current bassist George. So George is going to get a master's degree. He's going back to school. Um, so it was our kind of like last hurrah for George celebrating him. He's been in the band for about 10 years. So um, that was fun. Um, but now it's back to work. We got uh, we got about two more weeks until the album drops. So it's all the last minute, um, all that last minute stuff that uh, we're trying to think about for this uh, run up to the release. Cool, cool. All right. So I, I got kind of quite a few questions that we're going to have to backtrack on. Uh, no history, all kinds of good stuff like that. But I introduced you as a as a prog metal outfit, prog metal band. It, 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 are you comfortable with that? Is that cool? That uh, absolutely. I think prog is a really good umbrella for a lot of the stuff that we do. Right. Okay. So you've been around uh, quite a few years, but this is your second album, your sophomore release. Your first one was in 2016. Uh, let's go back to the beginnings of uh, Cyborg Octopus. Uh, mentioned that you're from Bay Area. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us how the band got together and uh, all that good stuff. So most of us um, were in high school together. So the original members, a decent, of us, a decent amount of us were all in high school together. Um, and then when we all graduated, we um, sort of took the band in a different direction, changed the name of the band to Cyborg Octopus. Um, and we put out an EP in 2011. Uh, that was five songs and 12 minutes long. So it was a very small EP. Um, and then in 2013, we put out a three song EP. Um, and that's when we added, um, that's when we officially added Patrick Corona. Um, and he's the one that plays sax and keyboards for us. So Patrick did some some features on some songs um, and then was added to the band in 2012, 2013. Um, and we've just been pretty much grinding since then. So uh, the first album full length was in 2016. Um, and we toured on that for a minute. Uh, and then the band kind of stagnated a little bit. You know, we were playing, we were playing shows and we were gigging, but we weren't, we weren't really writing a whole lot of new material. Um, and so then at that point, our, our guitarist, uh, David, who was one of the main songwriters at the time left the band. Um, and so with that, we sort of kind of had to start fresh and decide, you know, what the, what the direction of the band, if we wanted to still be doing this band or maybe try something new. Um, but we're all really passionate about Cyborg Octopus. Um, it is, um, you know, it's kind of a combination of a lot of the different things that we love about music all in one. And I think all of us are a bit too ADD to make any just one type of music, right? So uh, we like making all different sorts of things. So we decided Cyborg was the best thing for us to keep doing. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, uh, you know, working on and on, uh, off and on. We, uh, most of us have full-time jobs. So we're all, you know, we're all working guys too. So um, getting us all together as often as we can writing. And uh, then this uh, was done about a year ago. So the past year has been, you know, the business end of it, finding a label, finding somebody to help us release it. Um, so Silent Pendulum's done great. Um, we actually met them through our colleagues, uh, Taylor and Steak Sauce Mustache. So that's another band on the label. Um, and we've done some shows with them in the past. Um, and it's been great. So, you know, just getting business done and, and trying to get this out to as many people as possible. Very cool. Very cool. Let's start with the name. I know you probably guys get a lot of uh, questions about that. And yeah, I have, I have this game I play with my girlfriend. She was, she's like, there has got to be a band, you know, with every type of name. Is there a band called this? Is there a band called that? And I'm yeah. like, there is. There's probably 100 <laughs> of those. There's 1,200 of those. But Cyborg Octopus is very unique. And I love it because it reminds me of Peter Benchley. Are you familiar with the author? No, no, no. He's the guy that wrote Jaws. And okay. And he has this shtick or this um, affinity or I don't know what you call it for writing about sea creatures, sharks, uh -huh. animals like that. And he had this uh, one called White Shark, which was, I think, of Cyborg Octopus. 
when I think of White Shark because it's a story about a, uh, a mutant shark made by the Nazis that was a man and half shark, and it's, it's a killing machine. It was built for war. Interesting. It's crazy. Yeah, but that's what I think of Cyborg Octopus when, when I hear the name. I think that's a very cool name. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, originally, it was made by our, our old guitarist, David. So it, it was kind of his brainchild to start before he decided to make it like a real project. And that's when we all got brought back into the fold. Um, so that first 12 song EP was written completely by David and he had the idea. Um, and so originally it was we wanted something original um, and we wanted something that would get your attention, whether you like the name or not. Right. Um, and so that was originally the idea was, hey, if you dislike the name, you think it's dumb, you're going to see what the band's about. And if you like the name, you're going to see what the band's about. Um, and then over time, it's sort of taken this new meaning because, you know, it's such a weird concept and it's sort of like these two opposite things um, were kind of mashing together. And I really feel like that's what the band does as a whole. You know, it like takes a lot of these ideas and weird things that we enjoy and sort of mashes them up into something that's uniquely us. Um, and so I feel like the name has definitely been more appropriate as the years go on and our sound kind of develops. Um, so we kind of have our own our own thing going with Cyborg Octopus. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. What I like about the name is I think it uh, it fits the style of the band. It's very you are an eclectic band, uh, you know, though. Uh, you know, we've mentioned that you're a prog metal outfit. I, I the way I can see it is this. It's like you take a bowl and you add um you know, several different artists, everybody from like System of a Down to Cynic to Voivod, you know, to um, I, I wrote a whole bunch of bands that just kind of remind me of, of what you guys do and how you encompass it. Clearly, you are your own band mm -hmm. and you take those um, those influences. But, man, there, there's just so many artists that, you know, Primus, I can hear some Primus in there. Um, you're naming uh, a lot of bands we love. So you're, you're doing great. You're yeah. <laughs> like and that's no really more. what we tried to do yeah. is is take a little bit of everything we love musically and kind of get it all into this album. That's really was the goal. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of bands that do like genre blending kind of stuff. And I think what we're, what we're trying to do more so than just blend genres with metal is, you know, make sounds that are unique or make songs that have textures that are unique, right? Like our new single specters has soprano saxophone, um, because we thought trumpet would be cool, but we wanted something that we could play live all the time, right? So our saxophone player, um, saxophone works really well in place of the trumpet with those high, those kind of high notes. Um, and the texture is really, really pretty and really almost like sing-songy in terms of how the, the instrument sounds. So, you know, trying to combine things that we just don't hear very often is a huge part of the band. Um, and, you know, our influences are pretty pretty clear you know when we have certain parts of songs especially system of a down there's like i love system of a down it's one of my favorite bands of all time and there's definitely parts on the album that i was like oh this is like this could be such a cool part from a system of a down song or this would be an awesome cynic like this sounds like something maybe a cynic would have done um and you know trying to put our mark on it you know what i mean prog there's a lot of stuff that's already been done in prog and I think one of the best ways you can differentiate yourself is just being as genuine and unique as you as you possibly can, right? And so we're really trying to um, put what we're passionate about in the music. And obviously, you know, if you're hearing System of a Down and Cynic, those are two of our biggest <laughs> two of our biggest influences for sure. We love those bands, right? You, you're a great interview, man, because you're helping me segue these questions very easily. Because awesome. I want to touch on the horns. Um, I think it's fascinating when years ago, and even Dire Straits mentions it in one of their songs, Sultans of Swing. You know, they mention how a lot of rock bands that used horns um, or other types of instruments in hard rock or heavy metal were kind of kind of put down. It was like a, a lot of those bands were maybe afraid to go into that area. Mm. Um, but you guys clearly are not, and I think that that's uh, that's fascinating. You you on the video specters, you see, uh, you know, you, the, the sax player on there, and and you hear it clearly. But it blends in well. Tell us about the use of of other instruments into what you guys do and and use. Yeah, so on the on learning to breathe, we used a handful of instruments. So we had the saxophone, we had violin, um, we had some sitar. So we actually found somebody that owned a sitar and our guitarist learned to play the parts on the sitar, just the parts we needed for the album. He didn't necessarily learn the instrument, but he learned how to play the parts that we needed. Um, 
And I think it goes back to that, you know, the textures and trying to find whatever works for the song. Right. Um, And, you know, we see a lot more bands using saxophone nowadays, which I think is cool. But I also think it's more like a lot of times it can be shoehorned in as a gimmick. Right. It's like, here's this empty space in a song. Let's throw sax in here because people will like it. And while that's fine, we definitely don't like to do that ourselves. Right. And so Patrick, who is our sax player and our keyboard player, he wants to be fully integrated in the band right so you know not every song is going to have saxophone and not every song is going to have keyboard but you know there's songs that definitely utilize it more than others um and so i think each song has its own specific energy to it and so when we're writing songs we're thinking about what's appropriate for the song um and then it sort of becomes a cyborg octopus song over time you know it's not like we're like we're gonna write a cyborg octopus song it's like no we're just trying to create cool interesting music and then before the end of it it gets all the splashes that make it a, a cyborg octopus song um but patrick is the only member of the band that's musically trained so he has a degree in music and he's the only one in the band so it really helps that before the before any song is finished we have him there to really add his pieces and make sure that it's really fleshed out with all the instruments um so yeah we're really proud uh, on this album specifically a couple songs um that you know we have a bottomy or it's not called bottomy it's um it's uh old stories is the name of the song um and there's a really cool sax outro with the guitar and there's a lot of harmonies going on um and we just don't hear stuff like that a lot in metal or any genres really so we're happy to do things that we you know we think are cool what are the audiences uh obviously from where you're from they're used to you and they're probably you know all right you know but when you go elsewhere what what is the response when somebody first sees cyborg octopus hit the stage and you guys come up and do it yeah let me preface it also by like our live shows are kind of wild in their own right because we dress we dress up really however we want for the shows so um I think it's like how we look at it is it's it's our time. It's our 30, 45 minutes that we get to be superheroes, right? So we dress up. A lot of us wear tights or bright colors or we're not wearing a lot of clothes at all, right? So we have fun just being dumb on stage because it's part of just like what we've done as time goes on. The more shows we play, the more comfortable we get and the more we're having fun with each other on stage. So I think when we play to our crowds or people that know us, they're ready for a good time, right? They're ready to see us be dumb. They're ready to see the music and and party with us. That's kind of the goal. But it's always fun playing to new people because you always see those metal crowds start off like the arms crossed, kind of like not totally sure what they're they're watching. And then how I know we're doing a good job is that if by the end of the set, I can see people out in the crowd smiling, I know we've done a good job because it really is about being open-minded and kind of just going on the journey with us, you know? Um, and I, I think the less people take it so seriously, the more they're able to have fun. And I think that's something that I really think is, is a good positive influence that we bring to the scene because there are a lot of bands that take themselves very seriously and we're glad those bands exist. But you know, over the years, we found that that's just not who we are, right? To like, be so dark and dreary about it. Um, And, you know, metal pumps us up, it makes us happy, it makes us want to jump around. So we know we do our best to get that energy out. And so a lot of times people will be like, wow, I did not know what to expect. But that was awesome. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. And those are some of the best compliments we get, you know, the people that didn't know what to expect, and they come out and they're like, smiling and laughing with us after the show like they're our, like they're our friends right because they they saw a really genuine part of us up on stage like right. the equivalent of us like dancing in our underwear in our room to our own music right but we're doing it on a stage um and i, I really think that comes across so you know the really close-minded metal people they might never get it and that's okay but um yeah we think we think if you come to a show you might understand a little bit more about what it's all about and make no mistake that there is a small um, uh, uh, percentage of closed metal, uh, closed minded uh, metal uh, fans. Most, if I, I would say 90 percent or more since I've been listening to the genre over 40 years, um, you know, self-expression has been key for for metal. Mm-hmm. And I think that also the genre lends itself to be way more accepting of everything and anything than any other genre. Every other genre in music, it has its 
strict and set rules. And, and I respect those rules. Sometimes you don't want to go out of the boundaries of, of uh, certain things that you do. Um, you know, if, if it's, if it's music that's in, you know, um, like from New Mexican, Northern New, Me New Mexican music has a style. If you deviate from that, it's not traditional and it can kind of be disruptive. However, in metal for, for bands like yourself and bands like war, or even like when we talked about Primus going up there and being self-expressive, having fun, not just being, stuck in the status quo i think is yeah. what makes this uh genre of music and this universe so expansive and that's why bands like yourselves are so welcome yeah yeah and i also think like all metal like all genres have some degree of this but all metal is theater like you can't convince me otherwise that like even the most aggressive bands that are you know these beat down bands that are talking about like murdering and killing people it's all theater. They're not really talking about that. They're talking about this idea or this play in their head of what that, what the music evokes, right? And so, in the same way, when we're writing music, we're we're writing we're writing a play, right? We're writing what is this mu What's the story this music saying to us, right? Um, and so we take the music very seriously, but at the same time, that doesn't mean you need to take yourself so seriously, right? So. Um, we have a lot of fun and, um, you know, it's really cool because one of our one of our lyrics and one of our songs, it's about like the scene and kind of how promoters can be a pain in the ass. And so um, the song, one of the lines in the, in the in the song is fuck the band that's playing last. <laughs> so it's like it's like this, you know, everyone leaves at, at a local show. Everyone's there hanging out. And then, oh, this right. band they want to see is played. So they leave. Right. right? So on one of our first tours with inanimate existence, the first couple days we're playing the song. Like they came up to us after and like, is that song saying fuck the band that's playing last? And we're like, yeah guys, but it's not an insult to you. It's like, it's like metaphorical. Right. So, right. you know, it's just, it's for fun and, you know, playing around with these ideas that, you know, the metal scene deals with all the time and we just take it as normal, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you can make it whatever you want. Is that from the song shark pit? Yes. Yes, it yeah. is. That's an awesome <laughs> song. And I, and I love that because you guys run the gamut. You know, that song kind of, it's it's like a hardcore song. Yeah. And then you can go um, again to to like your your new, like Spectres, to where it, there's the, the construct of the song is, is, is far more different. Like you don't get the same thing twice from Cyborg Octopus. What's, what's a writing session like for you guys? Um, most of the songs start out as like a dumb idea. So like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we did this? Um, so, so, you know, Bottomy or the old stories, the first song on the album was originally called Bottomy or Bodomy. We combined Bodom and Sodomy because we, you know, we like butt stuff here in, right. in Cyborg Octopus. <laughs> so, so we like just combine weird ideas. So we like, let's make a, a children of Bodom song that we think is sick. So like, you know, the keyboards, we were like, this song is going to be really keyboard forward, but it's also going to have a lot of cool riffs. And then at the end is when we went, hey, this would be great to have like a dueling sax guitar solo. You know what I mean? So like that kind of stuff just comes out. So the weird ideas, Spectres was originally called Spaghetti Western. We were just like, we're making a Spaghetti Western song. Um, and so I even joked, like, it'd be so funny if we were all like, he rides alone. Like, it was just a joke. And then we we were like, wait, we could actually make this sound pretty cool, right? So a lot of times it starts as a funny idea or us laughing or making jokes about what a cool metal song would sound like. And then it just takes a long time for us to get there, right? Because we have an idea in our head and we're not really satisfied until everybody in the band is like, yes, this is cool we are done here. And that's really why the albums take so long is because we have these ideas, but it really does take a long time from like just a funny idea or a cool idea for a song to finished product. You mentioned um, Spectres and that is one of the, you got like two songs out, two videos, two songs mm -hmm. but prior to the release. So let, let's get this, uh, let everybody remember that the album is called Between the Light and Aaron will be released out at the end of the month, August 26th is what we're yep, talking about. Exactly. Right? And so you also have seizure of character. And it's funny because when you, you brought up um, the children of Bodom and I, I was, I was thinking kind of um, cradle of filth when I first awesome. heard that song. Also awesome. I, I heard keys and I heard the heaviness and then it took me into a whole bunch of di different directions. I think prog metal fans as well as just the general metal fans are going to find you guys very refreshing if they haven't heard you guys. And I think that that's, that's what's cool. You guys are a fun band to smoke pot to, man. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So 
This is, um, again, this is the second full link that you'll be having, and it's been since 2016. At the beginning of the interview, you talked about one of the founding members leaving the band and you guys kind of having to pick up the pieces. Um, was that a blessing in disguise, that happening, or was it just something that, you know, just a fact of life? Well, I think it was it was it was a blessing and a fact of life because he he's more focused on his his career, right? So he was more career focused. Um and so the band was kind of waiting around for him to finish writing songs. You know, so when we weren't having any songs done, we sort of had to go like, "Hey man, what's up?" and he was like, "Well, I'm I'm you know, I'm kind of done with with the band. I need to move forward and do other things." And so we did have a band meeting with him and we talked about it. And, you know, he had three songs that were not even half done. We had so like a couple songs. Spectres is one of them. So we had a couple songs on the album that were like sort of started, but we didn't have anything really finished. So he was like, look, this is what I have. Take this and run with it. You know, you're welcome to use any of the like pre like half written songs or whatever we had available. And so it was helpful because you know, we needed to know that we had to move forward on our own. Right. So it was good that we had that meeting and it was clear that like, Hey, I'm not writing anymore. I'm out of the band. And that was a couple of years ago. Um, and we didn't want to make a big announcement or anything. You know, we weren't going to make drama out of it because there was no drama. You know, he just went to go do his own thing. Um, but then when you think about it, this album was written by the same group of people that wrote the first album. You know, like everybody that had a, had a part in the first album had a part in this album as well. So even though it's kind of evolved and the sounds evolved, um, it really is coming from the same place. The origins are the same, the same. So when it came to deciding how to move forward, it was really, hey, who's going to pick up the brunt of the writing? And that really came down to Bobby, our guitarist, our other guitarist, and Patrick, who writes uh, key writes everything, but keys and sax is his main thing. So it was really cool that we had our guitarist writing as well as the guy doing all of our auxiliary instruments, you know, working together to make the songs. And I think that actually might have turned out better in terms of the amount of keys and the amount of saxophone we had on the album, because we definitely have more sax and keys on this album than we did on the last album. Um, and that's, you know, a ton of different reasons. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's it's amazing how I mean again you listen to the construct of the songs, and they're very melodic, and that's mm -hmm. that's the other key thing. I, I I don't sometimes I think bands can get a little bit too full of themselves and and let things kind of go over the listener's head, whereas this is just straight out. It's blunt, but it's eclectic, but it's melodic, and it's a mm -hmm. lot of fun, and it's stuff that you'll remember. How many tracks do you have on 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 this brand new release? So it's going to be seven tracks and it's about 36 minutes. So our first album was seven tracks and 35 minutes. So we are almost the exact same length as the first album. Um, and the only thing we didn't get in this new album, we had like a minute and a half intro song that we just didn't get finished before the album uh, was ready to go out. So um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a challenge because you know, there's a ton of bands that write shred and write crazy riffs, right? And we have some crazy riffs as well, but I think we we wanted to be more musical. And we've always focused on melody because, you know, we want the songs to be good on first listen and good on a hundred listens, right? Depending on what you're listening for. Um, but moving forward, we definitely wanted the songs to be concise and effective and i think where we come in in the prog space is not so much like crazy time signatures and crazy you know crazy difficult to follow rhythms but really good transitions and being able to make a ton of different riffs and put them together in an interesting way you know and i think that's something that we do really well is like it's not just like choosing weird songs but it's also putting the songs together in a way where they grew from beginning to end you know when we're on stage like i said we're dancing we're, like we're headbanging but we're like dancing and jumping around and you know it's it's way hard to do that with really tech you know really tech riffs so we really like and you know we're all we're, we come by it honestly liking the thrash and the straightforward you know straightforward good riffage so a lot of the songs are kind of based in some of that that thrash origins right where the the riffs are really straightforward but also really up tempo and that's that's what we like so that's what we write 
Certainly one word that can't be used for a cyborg octopus is boring. <laughs> Nothing that you have that I've heard of as of late is boring. It seems like, again, you're having fun, we're having fun. And I think that that's something that the world really, really needs. The metal mm -hmm. world needs it every bit as much as everything else in life. I want to ask you, you you've heard of the Impossible Burger from, from Burger King. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to ask you kind of an impossible question because it, um, I, when I think of bands like yourself, where I think of Voivod is one band that I think of the most uh, in terms of their evolution, because I, they didn't start off as a prog band. They started mm -hmm. off as a thrash metal band, but they kind of made their, uh, you know, their progressions. And, and from you got Warren Payne, their first album to Nothing Face, and then that's when everything changed. Mm -hmm. Can you see yourselves providing that you stay around for five years and, and uh, Cyborg Octopus puts out two, three albums? Where do you kind of see your headspace as far as what you're going to be making at that time? I know that's impossible to gauge, Um you know, but, it, but just for fun, kind of indulge us in that. Yeah, well, you know, when, when Learning to Breathe was done, I definitely wanted to sing more. I definitely, when I, we finished Learning to Breathe, there was a couple spots on that album that I was like, I should have sang here. Or I should have done this here. And so I definitely am always trying to expand what I'm doing vocally because it's a challenge. Like, I can scream, I can do highs, I can do lows, but, you know, there's only so much challenge to screaming, right? So... So when it comes to the songs, it's making the piece that works the best, um, whatever that is, right? And so when we're writing songs, we really don't know what they're going to sound like until they're all done. But with the stuff, we're already writing the next album. So there's already like parts of the next album getting started right now. Um, I think it's going to st it's going to stay similar. I think Cyborg is always going to have like that cyborg sound that we have, right? The all over the place, the interesting, the combining of genres. I think that's never going to go away. What I think might change or might vary more is maybe tempos of songs. You know, maybe we'll try a slower song. Uh, maybe we'll try a faster song. Um, but I also think we're always trying to do things that we've never done before. So if something sounds too similar or like, oh, we've done this idea already, it's reason for us not to do it. So I think whatever comes in the future, it's going to be new and different while also trying to stay true to who we are, right? And really the next spot, the next album, it really depends on what we're listening to at the time, you know, because um, this album was so influenced by all the stuff we were listening to and for me, vocally, it was influenced by a lot of the stuff I was listening to during the pandemic, right? Because I was doing pre-pro and, and stuff before pandemic, going into the pandemic before I recorded. Um, and, you know, I was listening to a lot of System of a Down. I was listening to a lot of emo bands. I was listening to, like, a lot of post-hardcore music. Um, and I was listening to a lot of prog and and thrash bands, like a lot of, like, Revocation, you know? So I was listening to a lot of different, thi like... A lot of different music and i think that's kind of what ends up driving what we listen what we what we make because when we eventually start recording i feel like everyone in our band stops listening to metal when we start recording mm -hmm. you know so once we start doing it ourselves we kind of tend to back away from listening to metal and yeah. more listening and taking from other genres because we all know what we like out of metal right so um it's just a, it's an it's an ever-changing process for sure Nice. I like that philosophy because I think sometimes you get back away from it for just a minute because you're always engulfed in metal. That's, you know, mm -hmm. I love all genres, all music, but heavy metal is my, my go-to. That's, yeah. that's my thing. That's a, that's your thing. I really do appreciate that. Uh, the band is called Cyborg Octopus. They are from the Bay Area. They have a brand new album getting ready to drop on August 26th. Did I get that mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's called uh, Between the Light and Air. It is on Silent Pendulum Records. You can currently watch two videos from the band right now, Seizure, a Seizure of Character and Spectres, um, and you can uh, catch catch up with some of their older stuff. I encourage you to look up Shark Pit as well as Disco uh, Brain, which is really cool. Yeah. A, a, a lot of videos that you have from the first or from the first full length that are on uh, that you can check out on YouTube. So it's very very cool stuff. And the vocalist Ian Forsyth has been joining us right here on Zero Hour Square Classics. Mm -hmm. Ian, uh, much continued success to you, man. And uh, I Thank hope you, to man. see you here in in Albuquerque. And uh, you guys are a lot of fun. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to talk on or, or speak of on behalf of the band? Uh, no, man, Mike. Thank you for having us. Um, to everybody who's watching, uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, if you're just hearing us for the first time come check out a live show um we'll have 
Uh, we have one show in Reno in about a week, but we're going to be trying to tour um, in October and then moving into the new year. So keep an eye out for shows. We'll, we'll be trying to come to your neighborhood very soon. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Ian, once again, thank you for joining us on the Zero Hour Squared Classics. It's been a lot of fun and we'll be looking out for you on the road. And once again, continued success. And we're looking forward to that new release. Thanks, Mike. Be good, man. All right. Thank you. Take care. Have a great weekend. See ya. Thanks.